How's it going guys? I'm out in the boat today doing a little early season April fishing and uh, I just caught a nice little crappie here on the Euro Tackle B Vibe. I'll leave the link in the description for those. Uh, they're a great little swim bait. In this video I want to help you guys kind of get your own tackle ready and get your boat prepped so that everything is ready for that early season fish opener. And we'll also run over to my buddy Dan's. We use his boat for tournament season. He's got a nice bass boat, so I fish league and tournaments with him. And he's got a lot of good organization stuff um, and tackle prep stuff to go over with us too. So we'll kind of hop back and forth between my boat here and his garage and uh, kind of share with you guys how we do everything. So. I've been fishing the last couple days here with Al Lindner. We were doing some scouting for the upcoming season of Lindner's Angling Edge, and that was a certainly a privilege to have Al in my boat. He's a fishing legend for sure, and uh, we had a good time looking for some new water for those guys. Uh, if you've never seen Lindner's Angling Edge, make sure you go check that out. It's a absolutely awesome show. Those guys are top notch. So uh, without any further ado, let's hop into some of these tips and tricks and get you guys on the on the road. All right, I'm here with Dan Buckman, my buddy. You've probably seen him on a couple of videos with me. Yep. And we're just gonna go over a few tips on like how to set up for the season, what to take out early, like opener weekend, and maybe even get into some early season bass stuff, what we would take on an early season bass trip. What do you got here, Dan? So all my tackle boxes are labeled with just a label maker. So hoppers in this one, frogs, square bills, all the way down to jerk baits and everything like that. And I've got my jig heads all organized by size. So I've got tube jig heads and just regular jig heads in there. Chatter baits and so on. So just seeing that in my boat, they stand up on end so I can actually see the labels whenever I need to grab something. Other thing is, you know, early season, we're not gonna do a whole lot of frogging and stuff like that. So I'll pull the frogs and the whopper ploppers and stuff like that right out of my boat and why carry around the extra weight, so. So what boxes are you bringing early season? Early season for bass, I'm doing jerk baits, square bills, chatter baits, uh, okay. stuff like that. Yep. Um, you know, we're gonna go to the Mississippi River here probably this next week, so I'll have you know plenty of jig heads and minnow profile soft baits and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I organize my soft baits in these shoe box containers. So it was my minnow one and all types of different minnows profiles in there by brand, front to back, so it's easy to find what I'm looking for. Drop drop box, thinner one so I can actually fit two in one space in my boat. Mm -hmm. In here I've got different sinkers, um, the cylindrical ones, the round balls by size, um, other finesse type things, my hooks by size, number six is up to one aughts. Uh, just helps me stay way organized. And then I can look in here and see, okay, I'm almost out of the number six drop shot hook. So on my wall, I've got my packs of number six. I can just throw them in quick and I know what I've got and what I need to reorder. Yeah, that's one thing you mentioned was the thin box. Yep. I started using thin boxes a couple of years ago and most baits you don't need a really deep box for right. and you just end up wasting space with those deep boxes. Yep. So I went to the, the, like, I think they're three quarter maybe. Or, yep. Yeah, you can see the difference in thickness. They're half the yeah. depth of them. So. You know, another thing that I have to do at least is I've got a lot of my lures that I use are actually um, open water and ice fishing lures. So I've got to remove all those from my ice fishing tackle, make sure I don't forget anything, and get all those lures into my open water boxes. So. That's another thing I've got to do before I transition from the ice season to open water. As far as those kind of odds and ends tackle stuff, you know, I really like to stock up my boat before the season. I'll make sure I put my life jackets in. I'll make sure I put an extra set of rain gear in the boat. All those little knickknacks that uh, you might have taken out for ice fishing season, like your pliers, your mouth spreaders, all that stuff. I'm going to get that all back in the boat and ready for the new season so that I'm not fumbling around looking for something that isn't there. So another thing that I like to do every year is check my net, make sure that we don't have any holes or tears. And actually I did have some in my net this year so I went and picked up a new one. And I got this Frable Conservation Series. This thing is a beast of a net and it's got rubberized mesh so you don't have those hooks sticking in the mesh. It's easy on the fish. It's got um, 
uh, a lock right here so you can fold it up and keep it you know in a smaller area and then it also has a telescoping um, basically twist lock handle so you've got almost six feet of extension on that thing with two handles this can handle pretty much any fish that I'm gonna come across other than like a giant pike or a big muskie so this will work on the Great Lakes for trout, salmon, uh, all my bass fishing, walleye fishing. So this is a great net. I will link this in the description. I really like this one. This is my favorite net that I've had so far. So make sure you check that out. Well, as you can see, Dan likes to keep a lot of extra tackle on hand. So yep. explain your system here. So on one end, I've got all my terminal tackle, hooks, sinkers, drop shot weight, stuff like that. And then I got line. You know, extra spools of um, high fluorocarbon for liters. And then I just kind of go by brand, um, the baits that I use most, make sure I have plenty in stock. And actually behind each package, I've got a label what goes there. So I know, okay, if I pull the last bag off, what I should order and have them back. Because a lot of the stuff in the middle of summer, I could go through three or four packages a day, especially if the bite's on, and I want to make sure I've got enough uh, to last. So. Yeah, so it goes by brands and then, you know, different sizes, usually smaller up on top down to bigger on the bottom. This helps me stay way more organized. I pull everything out of the boat in the fall, put it on here so I know what to order. And once I order, everything goes back into the boat. So, yeah, it's a little better than my system, which is stuff with a bunch of stuff in a bag and trying to remember what you got. Yep. <laughs> but then I'm going to work on mine too. I'm going to kind of set up something similar to Dan here. Yeah, and this, you know, isn't expensive. If you got an eight foot section of wall or even a four foot section, if you don't have a ton of stuff, you can easily buy a chunk of pegboard and throw it up with some brackets and stuff and, you know, stay a little more organized. You know, as far as my actual tackle goes, I'm just gonna go through all my boxes and move everything back to where it was. Kind of like Dan said, a lot of times you've got stuff in the wrong boxes and uh, stuff with lines still tied on it and you just want to kind of go through everything make sure it is where it's supposed to be Add some new baits in maybe get rid of some old stuff that doesn't need to be in there anymore And just generally organize your tackle so that you're all ready to go You know as Dan mentioned having things on hand is very important and uh, What I like to do is make some orders early like this time of year before the big rush just to make sure I have everything that's gonna be really critical this year because everybody is short on, on material. Uh, stuff stuck in China due to COVID, stuff stuck everywhere, So and it's sold out. There's millions more anglers than there's ever been. So there's gonna be shortages of a lot of stuff this year. So we gotta make sure that I've got everything I need before the season starts and that I've got backups for everything. So. I've been ordering extra soft plastics to just stock in my garage so when I run out of a bag I can just grab another one. You know all those staples that you use like you know uh, Senkos and uh, drop shot worms, tubes, all that stuff. Just make sure that you have extra for the season and you're stocked up and it makes it so much easier uh, to, to just grab it off the shelf rather than have to make sure you can find it somewhere. So another thing I do early season you know, before getting the boat out is go through all my boxes and make sure the baits are in the right spots. Mm -hmm. You know, in the middle of summer, you're just throwing baits back. You don't put them back in the right spot. So I, you know, this crankbait shouldn't be in here. I should put it in the box that it belongs in. So just making space like that and knowing where things go mm -hmm. saves a lot of time. Now, when you're sitting in a rainy day, you can organize this stuff instead of out on the boat, trying to find that one crankbait that it's not where it should be. Exactly. So, yeah. And another thing I do, I see there's a couple baits in here with line still yep. attached to them. I'll go back through and clip all those line tags off, which I'm sure you do too. Yep. And get everything all ship shaped for the upcoming season so you're not wasting time when you're out there yep. on the water. And another thing I'll do is check the hooks on like my most used crankbaits and jerk baits. You know, mm -hmm. over time they wear out, if you're, especially if you're catching a ton of fish. Mm -hmm. True change those out to make sure they're sharp so you don't miss those big fish. If I've got fluorocarbon leaders or any kind of leader, I'll cut those off. Yeah, I see you got some fraying here from probably a pike or maybe some rocks or something. Yep, you know, and I didn't change anything out in the fall. I just put stuff away in the garage and then mm -hmm. usually, you know, slow days in the spring where I don't have much going on, I'll come out and start working on stuff, tie up new jig trailers and stuff like that, so. Sure. 
you know, I'll check my braided line. I don't change that out every year. It's kind of a waste of money, I think. If you got the big frays, you'll cut that out. Mm -hmm. Another thing you can do is if you are changing out all your line on one reel, you can take, go reel to reel. So you're taking your old line, putting it first on the reel, and then having your new unused line back off yep. at the end. So That's something I've done too. You just basically reverse it. Yep. So the good end is now on the front and yep. the worn out end is on your spool. Yeah, you shouldn't have to replace braid every year, mm -hmm. uh, unless it gets really frayed if you're, you know, zebra mussels or something like that. But yeah, changing out your line. I also clean all my bait caster reels, take them all apart, oil them, grease them. Mm -hmm. um, I even clean my rods. I just take a damp rag with a little Dawn just soap and just wipe each rod down, just mm -hmm. clean them up, keep them uh, looking nice. So yeah. Another thing that I typically do with my rods is I'll clean them just like you did with the Dawn dish soap. And then uh, once they're dry and rinsed and dried, is I'll wipe them down with WD-40, yep. just a cloth, wipe them down, and that, that'll keep the guides from oxidizing and, yep. and uh, rusting on you. So. And if you're fishing early season and it's below freezing, that'll help keep your guides from icing up too. Yep. So. yep. And one thing that's critical that I do on every single season is retie my leaders on all my rods, because I'm kind of a braid nut, and I fish a lot of braid, to floral leader so I will take all my floral leaders off and retie them because they get frayed over the season um, and they also get uh, the knots get worn out and stuff like that so what I'm gonna do is just clip those leaders off and then retie about a six to eight foot leader on that braid and uh, depending on what I'm fishing for and what method I'm using it'll be anywhere from four to twenty pound test so and I typically like that six to eight foot leader just for visibility so the fish don't see that braid. I'm fishing a lot of clear water up here and I like to have that stretch as well. And that last, you know, right when you're gonna get that fish in the net, you've got that, that section of leader that's got a little bit of stretch to it. So as they head shake next to the boat, it kind of absorbs some of that shock. So it's a really, really good way to spool up rods and I've pretty much gone to that on all of mine. With the exception of jerkbait and crankbait rods, those are kind of the ones that I'll still use fluorocarbon on. The reason is you want a little bit more stretch with those small hooks. So I'll re-spool those pretty much every year. Fluorocarbon and mono can break down over time. So I'll usually re-spool those with, uh, with a monofilament or fluorocarbon. And that's kind of my, my line prep. Uh, for this for the season just to make sure everything's nice and fresh you know as far as boat prep um, basically I gave the whole boat a nice cleaning I wiped down all the surfaces vacuumed out the carpet and then uh, checked the trolling motor made sure that was working and that my remote was working and then before I came out I also ran the the motor on the muffs just to make sure it started right and idled right and all that stuff so uh, I put sea foam in the gas last year when I winterized it, which is something you guys should definitely consider doing. It keeps that gas nice and uh, stabilized for the winter, so they typically fire right up. So I'll leave a link in the description for that stuff too. It's definitely good stuff, so. So what do you do to get your boat ready, Dan? So my boat's pretty easy to get ready in the spring. Um, you know, I winterize it in the fall, the E-Tex, it's push a button and it winterizes itself. Mm -hmm. I change my lower unit lube. Um, every year just for preventative maintenance and make sure there's no water. Yep. Um, make sure my batteries are charged and I actually just picked up a new NOCO four bank battery charger so I can add another battery for my graphs. Um, I trust the NOCO stuff. It's a maintainer. It can actually um, fix batteries that have been drawn down too far too. So that's why oh, I went nice. with this one. So mm -hmm. um, and it's a four bank so when I upgrade my batteries and it will do lithium batteries too. So mm -hmm. kind of expensive, but you know, when you're running your trolling motor and your graphs most of the day, you wanna make sure you got the right battery juice all day. So mm -hmm. other things I do is take my props off my motor and my trolling motors, make sure there's no line on them, um, make sure the seals aren't cut up and anything like that. Um, and once it's a nice day out, I'll take it outside, wash the carpet, flush everything out, vacuum it up, make it look presentable because Yep. You know, heat in the summer, you're just throwing stuff around, you're frogging, you get weeds all over, and yep. the boat looks like a disaster at the end of the day. But when it looks like that, you know it was a good day fishing. Yep, lots of dried fish poo and 
you know, name it. <laughs> dyes and all Crayfish that. parts. Yep. Yeah, that's the way it's supposed um, to look. <laughs> yeah, if you take the time now, it will make your life in the summer much easier. I'll, I'll wipe out all my bins, make sure my life jackets are in there, make sure mm -hmm. my uh, throwables in there, fire extinguishers charged. You know, yep. my, my boat's pretty easy, but other people who keep them outside. It's, you know, mice proofing and getting all that stuff out, so. Yep, that's what I'm gonna have to do here. I store mine outside and then mouse proof it in the fall. So I'm gonna have to pull all that stuff out of my boat. And yep. uh, last year I had two dead batteries on my boat. I yep. just bought a new one and I didn't know the condition of them. Yep. So didn't wanna push it. So we just replaced all the batteries. So we know those yep. are pretty new. And if you've got a 24 volt trolling motor, you always wanna replace both batteries at the same time. Yep. Um, so that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. Another really important thing to do is to go over your trailer. So grease the wheel bearings, check your air pressure and the tires, make sure all your lights are working. That stuff is not fun to find after you've left the house to go fishing for the first time of the year. So make sure you just double check all that stuff. It's well worth the time it takes. And uh, if you find anything, make sure you get it fixed before the season starts. Another thing you wanna do before the season starts is go check your electronics uh, for updates. So I've got some Garmin Echomap 93SV high def units and they have uh, an app right that goes right to my phone and it's called Active Captain and that will give me the updates. So I just put the new updates in. Oftentimes they'll come up with them over the winter so uh, they may not have had them the year before and you can update all your mapping and sometimes get some new features on your units. So that's one thing I like to do. And then I also uh, updated my Navionics app on my phone. So having those up to date, make sure that you have the latest, you know, latest and greatest maps and features on those electronics. So thanks for showing us what you kind of do to get yeah. ready here, Dan. I appreciate it. Yeah, we'll be in the boat hopefully this week. So, yeah. so I hope you guys found this video super helpful. And uh, next time I see you, we'll probably be down in Florida on the Gulf Coast. I'm going to hopefully be filming some stuff down there. If you guys have never fished there, you need to watch this next video because it is fishing paradise. And I can show you exactly how I fish down there with very little gear, even on vacation like we're doing, uh, without even hiring a guide or anything. There's plenty of opportunity to go out and catch fish. So. Uh, if you ever end up there, um, this will be a really good video for you just to see how, how to get a few fish without putting in a ton of effort or hiring guides and spending a bunch of money. So uh, check that out. And until then, you guys have a good April here and get hooked up. Dry and rinsed and dried. Oh. Oh, my almost stuck in the mud. I can't even walk in it. Uh-huh. It's real muddy. Okay. <laughs> He's never gone. <laughs> okay. Try not to make too much. Surprised it's a train horn. I know. <laughs>